Our gracious Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for your loving care. We thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. And Lord, I'm just going to ask that uh, um, you fill each and every one of us with your holy presence. Lord, be with us, lead us, guide us as we continue to worship you this morning. And we thank you for being our God. In Jesus' name, amen. I read a lot of things in my life. And I don't know if you've ever contemplated before, if you could go back in time and change anything, if you would do it. I have thought about that often, and I have to say that I probably would. I, I, I have come to terms with the fact that I would not go back in time to try to change anything if I could. Obviously, we can't, but I wouldn't because I would cease to be who I am. And I believe that we can learn from our mistakes and that we should learn from our mistakes and rise above them. With all that being said, there is one thing that I would do if I could and go back and change. Not for me, but because I hurt somebody deeply. I was in grade school and there was this, I'm going to call this, is Pat? a name that I could use for a girl or a boy. Okay. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So this person's name was Pat. Um, It wasn't really their name. It's just, we're going to go with Pat. Um, But anyway, um, Pat was made fun of a lot in school. Um, And I never partook of it, but I didn't stop it either. And one day Pat came into school and we had to line up before we, got into the school building and we were lined up by class. And so one of my schoolmates came up, Pat had just bought new brand. I had just gotten brand new white shoes. And so Pat was standing there showing Pat's friends, uh, these wonderful brand new shoes. And one of my schoolmates dug his feet into the mud and walked up to Pat and put his foot on one of Pat's shoes you could have, you should have seen the look on Pat's face, the look of hurt, just utter pain. And of course, my other schoolmates' friends were laughing, and I don't know why I did what I did, but I did the same thing. I put my foot in the ground, I got it all muddy, and I walked over and I put mud on Pat's other shoe. I wouldn't change it because of me. I would change it because I hurt a friend. I betrayed a friend. And I've often contemplated how Jesus felt in the night of his betrayal. It's easy to come down on Judas. He's a wonderful scapegoat. But the reality of it is, is that Not only am I capable of doing what he did to Jesus, I have done what he did to Jesus. Turn with me, if you will, to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. And I am getting old, so I actually have to use this why I have this and not my Bible, which I normally have, because I can't read the Bible anymore without my readers. And my readers got scraped up. But John chapter 13, John chapter 13. Now, before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from the supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he began to pour water into a basin and wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and of course, Peter said, Lord, you're not going to wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't, you're not going to have any part in my kingdom. And And then Simon Peter said this, Lord, then just baptize me in that dirty water. 
Mind you, it was dirty water because it was the water to wash the feet. And I don't think they forgot to do that. But anyway, Peter wants to be washed all over. And Jesus says this. He who is bathed, verse 10, needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. You are clean, but not all of you. For he knew who would betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. Jesus is at the Last Supper with his disciples, and weird things are happening. You could see the, 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 the pain on, wearing down on Jesus and coming down on him, and, and, and the disciples knew something was up. Um, and so when he had washed their feet, taken his garment, and he sat down again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If then I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Most assuredly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is he who sent he who is sent greater than he who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you that do them. And I read that because of this, because Jesus is actually building up to something. All throughout that supper, he kept warning that Judas was going to betray him. But not just Judas. He was talking about the other disciples, too, because the other disciples would be tried that night as well. In verse 18, he says this, I do not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. How many of them were eating bread with him? All of them. And eating was a very intimate thing. And to lift up one's heel is, a, is an expression of absolute betrayal. So one of them is going to betray them. He who eats bread with me is going to betray me. Now I tell you before it comes, this is, this is, I want you to make special note of this. He says this, now I tell you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you believe that I am he. I'm going to read that again. Now I tell you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Jesus is identifying himself as the I am. And he's telling his disciples, he's telling Judas, and, and of course Peter, because we know Peter's going to deny him, and the other disciples are going to flee, but he's telling them, I, I'm telling you this beforehand, because when it does come to pass, you know that I am. And I will deliver you. The one who had appeared to Moses in the burning bush and sent him to deliver Israel out of slavery. The one who had told the Jewish leaders before Abraham was, I am. The one who had turned water into wine and calmed the storm. Was now telling the disciples, you're going to mess up tonight. But know that I am. And I can deliver you, I can forgive you, I can heal you, and I can make you whole again. One by one, the disciples began to ask, is it I, Lord? Is it I, Lord? Is it I, Lord? And Judas, is it I, Rabbi? And the Gospel of John says that uh, one of the disciples, most likely John, was leaning against Jesus' bosom. And it says that, that Peter said, dude, ask him who it is. Ask him. And so that other disciple asked, who is it, Lord? And Jesus answered, verse 26, it is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. But no one at the table knew for what reason he had said this to him. 
There's some thought that Judas, had the, who had the money box, that Jesus was telling him to go feed the poor or get something for the feast. Having received the piece of bread, he then went out immediately, and it was night. Now, Jesus continued to talk to the other disciples, share a lot of things. In our scripture reading this morning, he told Peter that Peter was going to deny him three times. And Peter was like, Peter was, he was gung-ho. He was just happy to be there. Um, but he, he loved Jesus. And there was no way that he would deny Jesus. And he couldn't believe that Jesus was even telling him that he was going to deny him. But Jesus said, you know what? You're going to deny me three times before dawn. Before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times. And then Jesus went out with the rest of the disciples and he went to the garden. And we know that he prayed and he, he as he was praying, he sweat drops of blood. He was in absolute agony as the weight of the world's sin was weighing down in on him. Now, if you will, turn to John chapter 18. John chapter 18, Jesus is about to be betrayed by Judas. John chapter 18, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kidron, where there was a garden, which he and the disciples entered. And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, for Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. And Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him, went forward and said to them, Whom are you seeking? And they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said to them, I am he. And Judas, who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now when he said to them, I am he, they drew back and they fell to the ground. Do you, did you catch what Jesus just did? Let's let this sit in, same word, same word. Same word. He told the disciples, he told Judas, I'm telling you beforehand that you're going to betray me so that when it does come to pass, you know that I am he. You know that I can forgive you. And now Judas is right there betraying Jesus. And Jesus is about to be tried and condemned. He's about to be hung on the cross, beaten, scourged, bruised for us, for Judas. And all he can think about is begging, begging Judas. He's not declaring that he's God so that the other people know that he's God. He is begging Judas to accept him as Lord so that he can be forgiven. I am he. And I have no idea. 50 years old, I have no idea where I never caught that. Yeah. Never caught it till tomorrow, until yesterday, yesterday, tomorrow morning, yesterday morning. <laughs> And I sat there and I broke down because I have been Judas. I am Judas. Then he asked them again, whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, let these go their way that the saying may be fulfilled, which he spoke, of those whom you gave me, I have lost none. Now, the Gospel of Mark and Matthew record that the disciples at this point in time fled. They scattered. We continue reading on John. We know that, that, that Peter followed Jesus after he was arrested. But not only did he, but before he followed Jesus, we know that Peter whipped out a sword when, 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 when Jesus was being arrested. And he whipped out his sword and he, he 
started swinging and actually cut off the, the servant of the high priest's ear. Melchus was his name. And Jesus healed, immediately healed the ear. And he told Peter, put that sword away. Shall I not drink the cup which the father has given me? And all the disciples fled, but Peter came back. And Simon Peter, verse 15, chapter 18 of John. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. Now that disciple was known to the high priest. And he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door outside. Then the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out and spoke to her, spoke to her who kept the door and brought Peter in. Then the servant girl, who knows that Peter is with the other disciple, said to Peter, you are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? And what did Peter say? I am not. First denial. Verse 18, now the servants and the officers who had made a fire of coals stood there, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves. And Peter stood with them and warmed himself. Now Simon Peter stood and he warmed himself. Therefore they said to him, you are not also one of his disciples, are you? And he denied it again. Then one of the servants of the high priest, a relative of whom, whose ear Peter had cut off, said, did I not see you in the garden with him? And Peter then again denied it. And immediately the rooster crowed. And the Gospel of Luke says that Jesus turned and looked at Peter. And then Peter remembered the word that the Lord had said, how he had said to him, before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. So he went out and he wept bitterly. Can you imagine that? Jesus is on trial for his life. He knows where he's going, but he's been beaten. He's been scourged. He's been mocked. And while this illegal trial is going on, he knows that one of his friends desperately needs him now. And so he takes his focus off of everything that's going on, and he looks right at Peter. Married men. <laughs> you know the look? You ever had that look? You say something, you do something, and you might not even see right away, but the wife looks at you she doesn't say anything she just looks at you and you know you know all of the things that you have to do in that moment you just know and you do them without even saying anything unless you want to get adventurous I don't recommend that I it's funny because I, I, I learned that in the third grade, that look that a woman can give. It doesn't have to say anything, just can give it. I was in the third grade. We'd just gotten back from recess. I'd gone to a Christian, Christian school. So there I was with my, my classmates, and we were in the drinking fountain, and the teacher's bathroom, the faculty bathroom, was like right next to the drinking fountain. So there I am in line, and please forgive me this, but there I am in line, and I happen to drop a very nice swear word that begins with an F. Right as Mrs. Casson, my third grade teacher, opened the bathroom door. So there are the words hanging in the air. <laughs> and she gives me this look. Never said anything. And I can tell you this. No adult ever heard me swear again. But she never said a word to me. She went and got a cup and a piece of ivory soap. Now, you couldn't do that today. But apparently you could back then. 
And I had to, I had to take that in my mouth for the rest of the day until it was gone. And I could spit it out in a cup. She at least made me not swallow it, which is good. Cause that was gross. But I can tell you supper was horrible that night. I don't even remember what it was. I just remember that I had eaten soap and, and you don't want to do that. And no adult ever heard me swear again, ever. Until I couldn't get in trouble anymore. But anyway. Jesus looks right at Peter. And I imagine it was a look of. I, I, a, a look of pity. A look of hurt. A look of disappointment. But there was something else in that look. There was a look. Of hope. A look that said. I can forgive you. A look that said, I am. And when Peter saw that look on Jesus' face, while the words were still fresh in the air, he remembered that Jesus had predicted his denial, and he realized what he had done. His heart melted, and he was filled with shameful remorse. He also remembered the words that Jesus spoke, that it would be better for the person that who's going to betray him not to have been born. He also remembered that Jesus said, I tell you this beforehand so that when it does come to pass, you will remember that I am he. He also remembered that in the same breath that he had foretold of his denial, he said in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And I go and prepare a place for you that where I go, and I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. And in that moment of grief, not to save himself or ensure his salvation, but out of pure love for the one he had just betrayed, Peter goes out and he weeps bitterly for forgiveness. Earlier that night, he couldn't even stay awake in the garden when Jesus was feeling the weight of the world's sin on him and was sweating drops of blood. Peter couldn't even stay awake. But now he was awake and he was begging for forgiveness for the one who he had hurt. The Bible tells us that he was forgiven. He was restored. And not only was he restored, he became a rock, a leader, leader for the early church. On the other hand, Judas's reaction is much different. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 3, then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said to him, what is that to us? You see to it. In other words, it's your responsibility. You see, Judas was doing what so many of us do today. While Peter went out and he wept for forgiveness, Judas tried to work out his own salvation. He tried to, he tried to give back the money to reverse what he had done by saying, I betrayed innocent blood. I was wrong. Here's the money back. And they said, what is that to us? This is on you. He's already done the act. What he didn't realize in that moment is that he could have asked for forgiveness but he didn't. And instead, the Bible tells us that he went out and he hung himself. He tried to work out his own forgiveness instead of asking God for forgiveness. And when we neglect the forgiveness that is so freely given to us, we betray God. And when we don't hold ourselves accountable for our own actions, we betray God. Judas, like Peter and the other disciples, had given up a lot to follow Jesus. Judas was there throughout much of Jesus' ministry. He had seen Jesus heal the sick. He had seen Jesus control the forces of nature by calming the, the angry storm at sea. He had seen Jesus heal the lame. He had seen all of Jesus' miracles. He had seen all Je heard all Jesus' sermons. 
and he had actually been given spiritual gifts and ministered to other people. But when Jesus told the disciples that somebody was going to betray him, all the other disciples said, is it I, Lord? Is it I, Lord? Except for Judas. Judas said, is it I, Rabbi? So where the other disciples saw Jesus as Lord, Judas did not. He saw Jesus as somebody to be respected, somebody to revere, somebody that was a great instructor, a teacher, but he hadn't surrendered his will to him. He was informed, but he was not transformed. He was informed, but he was not transformed. Jesus was not a part of his life as God. He was not Lord of his life. So I ask you this question this morning. Have you surrendered your life to Jesus? Is he Lord of your life? Because it's not just a, it, it's not enough just to know that he was a great man and a wonderful teacher. We must accept him as the I am. I have betrayed God more times than I can count. I have denied him with my actions, with my words. I have often neglected the responsibilities that he has given me to take care of. And I know I am not alone. I have been places that I shouldn't have been, said things that I shouldn't have said. I have denied him with my actions, with my words. I have neglected the responsibilities that he has given me. I have walked away from people that he told me that I should help. I have been too afraid at times to speak to other people about him, and I know I'm not alone in this. And I have been ashamed at times to let others know that I am a Christian, and I know that I am not alone in this. I was the one that betrayed Jesus. I was the one who beat him and spit at him and put him on that cross and nailed them to it and then mocked them some more. I was the one, and I know I'm not alone in this. I have begged the I am for forgiveness because I know that he's the I am. And he's forgiven me. And he will forgive you because he's the I am. I have begged him for forgiveness, and I also know that he has forgiven me. And as one forgiven, I can freely go out and sin no more. I can bow down before my brother and then wash their feet because I know that I have been saved. And that's what Jesus calls us to do. He calls us to serve others. And when you know that you are forgiven, then you can actually, actually do that. You can go out and serve other people. You can go out and fulfill the command that God gave us to share the gospel, to help other people. But we have to accept that forgiveness. We have to accept it for ourselves. We have to know and trust that he is the I am. Jesus has called all of us, no matter who you are or what you are, or what you've done, Jesus has called you and Jesus can forgive you. So I want to encourage you this morning to come to the altar. Not just for forgiveness. And I want to stress this point. It's not that it's not. And we shouldn't say that God can forgive you. God has forgiven you. God has forgiven you. We just have to accept that forgiveness. So not only do I want to encourage you to accept that forgiveness, but I also want to encourage you to come to the altar and ask for perseverance as you share the gospel with other people, as you tell other people what Jesus has done for you. As you let other people know that Jesus can save them. I believe our closing hymn this morning is Come to the Altar. I hurting and broken within. Overwhelmed.
by the way of the ascent, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of your cell? Do you thirst from the drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, 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 come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Bow down before him. For he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah. Christ is risen. Sing with me, everybody. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Thank <laughs> you.